Hey everyone, and welcome. Today we're tackling a really interesting problem, delete duplicate folders in system. It sounds like a sysadmin task, but it's actually a fascinating tree and string manipulation problem. Let's break it down together. Okay, let's look at what the problem is asking. We're given a list of file paths. Our job is to find any folders that are identical and delete all of them. After a single pass of deletion, we need to return the paths of all the folders that are left over. So, what does it really mean for two folders to be identical? This is the absolute key to the whole problem. It's not about the names of the folders we are comparing. It's about what's inside them. For example, if you have a folder named A and another named B, they are considered identical if they contain the exact same set of subfolders with the exact same structures under those subfolders and so on. The names A and B don't have to match, but their contents and structure must. Let's walk through a quick example to make this concrete. Imagine we have a file system with three folders at the root a, B, and C. Now folders A and B each contain just one subfolder, and it's named Express. Folder C is empty. So when we compare them, the structure under A is identical to the structure under B. Because they're a matching pair, they both get marked for deletion. Folder C press, however, is unique. It doesn't match anything. So after we delete A and B and everything inside them, the only thing left is the path to C press. Okay, so how do we actually solve this? Trying to compare these structures directly would be a nightmare. So, let's come up with a plan. First, a list of paths is just begging to be turned into a tree. A try is the perfect data structure for this. Second, we need a way to give each subfolder structure a unique fingerprint. We can do this by converting the structure into a special string. This is often called serialization. Then, it's simple. We just count the fingerprints. If any fingerprint appears more than once, all folders that produced it are duplicates. Finally, we just walk our original tree one last time and build our output paths, but this time, we'll skip any branch that starts with a folder we marked as a duplicate. The official approach from the editorial uses this idea of subtree serialization. We'll use a post-order traversal. Now, if you remember, post-order simply means we visit all of a node's children before we process the node itself. This is perfect for us. For each folder, we'll first get the unique strings that represent its children. Then, and this is super important, we'll sort those child strings alphabetically. This ensures that a folder with subfolders X and Y gets the same fingerprint as a folder with Y and X prints. Finally, we combine the parent's name with these sorted child strings to create its own unique fingerprint. All right, here's the full Python code that implements this idea. I'll use the logic from the editorial, which is more robust. Don't worry, it might look like a lot, but we're going to break it down piece by piece. There are three main steps, building the tree, serializing the subtrees to find duplicates, and then building our final result. First up, building the tree. This part is pretty simple. We're using a dictionary in Python to act as our tree's root. For every path we're given, we start at this root. We then go through each folder name in the path, one by one. If a folder doesn't exist yet as a key in our current dictionary, we create it by adding an empty dictionary. Then, we move our pointer down into that new dictionary. It's a really clean way to build the whole file system structure. This is the heart of the solution. We have a function, let's call it serialize, that performs a post-order traversal. For any given folder or node, it first recursively calls itself on all its children. It's crucial that it processes the children in alphabetical order. It collects the resulting fingerprint strings from its children, prepends the child's name to each, and joins them all together inside parentheses. This becomes the current node's fingerprint. We store this fingerprint in a counter, to track how many times we've seen this exact structure. We also map the node itself to its fingerprint so we can look it up later. Finally, after we've fingerprinted every single subfolder in the entire system, we do one more traversal. This function, let's call it getPaths, walks the tree from the top down. At each folder, it looks up its fingerprint, which we saved earlier. It checks our counter. If the count for this fingerprint is greater than one, and it's not just an empty folder, it means this is a duplicate. So we simply stop and prune this entire branch. We don't go any deeper. If it's not a duplicate, we add its path to our results and continue exploring its children. So how efficient is this? Well, the most expensive part is creating and joining all those strings during the serialization step. If we say S is the total number of characters across all the input paths, the time complexity is roughly on the order of S squared in the worst case. This is because the serialized strings can get very long and combining them takes time. The space complexity is similar because we have to store the try and all of those potentially long fingerprint strings in memory. 
So what are the big ideas to take away from this problem? First, whenever you see problems about file paths or string prefixes, your mind should immediately think of a try. It's almost always the right tool for the job. Second, serialization is an incredibly powerful pattern. When you need to check for duplicates of a complex structure, converting that structure into a unique, comparable format like a string is a fantastic approach. And finally remember that post-order traversal is your best friend when you need to compute something for a parent node that depends on the results from its children. I hope that breakdown made sense and helped you understand this tricky problem. If it did, a thumbs up on the video is always appreciated. Subscribe for more Leap Code explanations and feel free to drop any questions in the comments below. And hey, if you're feeling extra generous, you can always support the channel through the Boba Fund. Thanks for watching, keep up the great work and I'll see you in the next one.